Hey guys, it's Aaron. Uh, so a recent guest on our webinar, Katie McElveen, uh, was playing around and I, I caught a couple different tips from her in SketchUp. So one of the things I really wanted to do was take a look at this, which is bringing in a piece of material, an odd shaped piece of wood material and uh, manipulating it to look more realistic in SketchUp. It's pretty quick, cool tip, but I had to show it. So let's take a look. All right, so obviously, first thing I need to do is get an image in here. So I'm just gonna go to File, and I'm gonna click on Import, and I'm gonna go grab, this is just a screenshot I did, just a, a, an image I found on the internet of a big old wood slab. So I wanna pretend this, and I, I didn't, I didn't worry about scaling it again. I just brought it in so it's nice and big so we can see it well. This is something I could scale down and maybe if I had this, it would be a, I don't know, a coffee table or maybe some resin would get involved and a portion of it would be a dining table. I don't know, I'm not really sure what the purpose would be, but what I wanna do is get a fair representation of this inside of SketchUp that I can actually work with. It's gonna look like the actual piece I'm, I'm using. So uh, let's take a look at how to do that. The first thing, I did import this as an image, so if I pick on it, it does say it's an image. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna hit explode. The reason I'm doing this, so as soon as I explode it, it becomes a surface with a texture on it. And you can see that that material, that texture just showed up in my color screen. The reason I do that, rather than importing it as a texture, is it's so much easier to pull it in and just scale the whole thing rather than having to have, I guess it's not so much easier, it's a, a step less than having to already have a rectangle to apply this to. So for me, it's easier to import an image and explode it. Once I explode it, it is a face and edges. I, this is no longer an image. All right, so the other reason I wanna make it a, a face is because I'm gonna go in and manipulate it. I'm gonna cut it. What I wanna do is I'm gonna come in here and kind of trace this out and basically get rid of all this white stuff. So what I'm gonna do that with is the freehand tool. Up here at the top, I have line and freehand. Freehand's a tool I just almost never use, so it's kind of fun to find a workflow where I can actually practice a little bit. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click here and I'm just gonna kind of drag this along just inside the edge of the drawing. So not worried about being perfect because you know that's the reason I would use a piece of wood like this is because it is imperfect. That's the charm. So I'm just gonna kind of click here and just keep dragging along like this. Just make a couple different line segments. It's hard to tell from this photo too, from the depth, what's edge and what's face, but I'm gonna go like that, bring it up to here. And then when I get to the edge, I'm gonna switch over to a regular line. So I get a nice straight line right here. Again, just staying inside, boom, like that. Uh, hey, got another boom over here, check this out. Click and a boom. So now I'm gonna switch back over to freehand. Uh, here we go, this is kind of a cool shape here. Gonna come up around. Again, I'm not worried about trying to get right on the edge. Uh, I just wanna kind of get a representation of what that shape looks like. I don't think I actually met, I don't like that very much. I'm gonna come in and draw a new line from here to here and get rid of this piece right here. I didn't like that way that jumped in like that. All right, uh, just a standard line like this and like this and then one more freehand line this is kind of cool because this is where you get to be you know kind of artistic or i could actually do this from a big if i had a large image of just wood texture i could actually make my own shape so here i'm just kind of loosely following the existing shape but this could be done on a piece that, uh, you know, just a, a big slab. I could just follow some grain and, and kind of cut the shape out as I needed for my model or for my project, whatever. So I'm gonna bring this around till it snaps that end point. Boom, like that. Okay, all the light lines turn light. That means there's no edges in here. I can come in here and use my eraser tool to erase these four sides, and I got that. So right away, that's so already, um, I have something that I could work with. I'm gonna do more though. I'm going to make it into an actual slab by switching to push-pull and pulling that up and giving it some depth. Now when I did that, look what happened. So here's a line here, here's a line here, here's a line here. 
all those lines, every place I had to restart, stop and restart the freehand tool, I got a line. So I'm going to hit con Command Z, Control Z to undo. And before I pull it up, I'm going to actually come in here and grab the lines that make up each side like that, right click on them, and hit weld edges. I think, was this all one piece? Almost. This is where I made that correction. So I have one extra line there. Right click, weld edges. Up here, if I spin this just right, I might be able to use a select window to grab those edges. Right click, weld edges. Now when I push pull, there we go. So I don't have those breaks in the lines on the edges. All right, it's looking cool. This obviously, this edge is not, that's not good. What I could do is I could actually use this material flip sideways and kind of put it on the side there, but I actually have another material. So I'm gonna say import and I'm gonna go grab uh, this right here. I'm just gonna pull it up nice and big. Uh, this is not a perfect image of wood, but I figured it was dark and it would make for a nice contrasting edge. It does have, the, the picture has kind of a lip right here, so a little, little white outline. So what I'm gonna do the same thing and explode this, and that adds the material. This material does have that white line in it. What I'm gonna do is grab a rectangle, and I'm gonna come grab like there, whoop, to here, get rid of these edges, like that, and I'm gonna right click and say make this a unique texture. So now I have this texture. I'm actually gonna right click and remove that first texture. Uh, there we go. Okay, so now I have this material. The other thing I wanna check on here is I'm gonna right click on the material, go to texture, and make sure I turn on projected. Now what I can do is I can grab my paint bucket tool, I can pick that texture, and I'm just going to slap it on the edge. All right, so this is not going to be a beautiful, perfect, seamless texture, by the way. And I know that. And I also know my end grain, which would be nice to have like concentric ring texture, would is not exactly the way it should be. But this is a good representation of how this material might look. Now, here is another thing that Katie showed me. She didn't know she was showing me. She was doing stuff on her computer, and I watched and, you know, stole things from her. But one of the things she showed was, uh, you know, this is good. Like I said, if, if I had this as a big slab and I was going to work with this somehow, this would be a good start. This is actually incredibly thick. Uh, but what I could do is grab this bottom surface like this, hit scale, and then drag this edge out a little bit, drag this edge out a little bit, and just that little bit of scaling, little bit of deformation, and this is starting to look like it could actually be a real slab. See that, how it added that? Now to take that just a little bit further, the only place that that got weird is it's still very symmetrical here right in the middle, like this, this crotch area. So I'm gonna grab this one, hit scale again, and I'll just grab that line, pull this one this way a little bit, pull this one this way a little bit, because this is how this would actually, if this were a real tree, I'm gonna grab this one, pull this one up a little bit. And with that, just a couple couple edits, you can see how, how that turned into from, you know, like I said, it was, it was, it was a pretty simple shape before, but now it's, it's fairly realistic. Again, the edges, I might actually take this and move it straight down just a bit to, yeah, that looks even better. Look at that. Oh yes. I love it. Um, so the edges aren't great. Like I could do a little bit more work with projected or grab a extension like through paint to get a nice edge boundary on there. But uh, for what I'm looking for, for just a, a representation of what this wood would look like for my project, uh, that's pretty cool and super quick and easy. I hope you like that. Like I said, it was just a couple things that she showed that I'm like, oh man, just that scaling the bottom and making that, it was so quick, so easy, and it just makes a big difference to the way that the image actually looked. Um, this is not the same. I'm not, not talking about getting perfectly accurate. I'm not 3D scanning and importing a uh, you know, a point cloud of the exact shape of the thing. Uh, this is more just if I wanted to mock up some ideas of how I could use this piece of material I have. Uh, I could scale that to about the right size and work with it, but real easily getting what is closer to a realistic shape rather than just having, you know, a rectangle with some image on there. Um, anyhow, let me know what you thought of that. If you did like that, go ahead and click like down below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. We create several videos a week and you'll be notified of each and every one if you subscribe. 
Most importantly though, please leave a comment down below. Most if not all of our content nowadays is derived from comments from viewers like you. We like making these videos a lot. We like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.